Welcome to a video from thedishlife.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at my smart home heating. Um, in the other videos that I've shown, I've looked at lighting and that this is heating. Now, when it came to heating, you'll see the article that I wrote along with this on thedishlife.com. I decided to go with a hive system uh, which is installed by a British Gas Engineer. You can self build it or self install if you want. And so, here in my hallway, I had an old thermostat and that's been replaced by this nice hive system. So, um, well, why, why choose Hive? Well, first of all, the good thing about this is um, it's controllable from Alexa, controllable from a smartphone, it's controllable through the web, but it's also controllable through this unit here. Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. So, I don't have to, uh, or the whole family don't have to have the app installed. They can use this, and this is quite comprehensive. You can do all the program, everything on here, which is one of the main. Uh, reasons why I chose this one. So let's start off beginning. First, so this is the control unit I've got in my hallway, but actually this could be anywhere. It's wireless. So what do you need to get this working? So here, here I have uh, my old, well, my boiler control. You can see the footprint of the old unit that was on here, so I don't have to paint this wall. But before here, I had an old analog, an old digital timer that you could only set. Um, for schedule slots per day and there was only one day so you have to have this t the heating on at the same time every day of the week doesn't matter at the weekend that you get up later it still came on at the same time so getting up early for work uh, during the week meant that the heating was on early but then at weekend it was it started to cool down by the time I actually got up and that gets away with this so this is what was fitted by the engineer this is directly connected to the boiler that controls the hot water and the heating the next component is the uh, is the, therm the thermostat. So this is the what's detecting the temperature, and from here you can control everything. Um, so you can see the current temperature. It's off at the moment, but I can select the target temperature. I can boost the heating if I wanted to. At the moment, it's off. So that's showing that. If it gets to seven degrees, it'll turn the heating on regardless of what programming I've got set. So it effectively stop your um, system freezing. And I can boost the heating from up here, but I'll show you that on the phone in a minute. So that's the the thermostat. I picked that. One thing I like about this is it looks nice. It's got a nice uh, reflective finish to it. Uh, it's got this case, and I've also got a piano black version of that as well available, I could swap if I wanted to but the, and this could be mounted anyway, I chose here because the old one was here and the wires were there and this fits over the wires so to get it onto the internet you need some kind of bridge so here's my bridge, this is connected to my uh, router and it's got power, that's all it needs and that enables the hive to communicate over the internet so once you've got um, Hive install up and running, so the gas, British Gas Engineer did all that. You've got uh, apps for iOS, Android and Windows Phone. And funny enough, the Windows Phone is actually probably the better app of the, of the three. And you can do it through the browser as well and uh, Alexa as well. So this is the kind of thing you can do. I've just started to do my scheduling so you can see in the morning I've got it set for 21 degrees. It comes on at 5.30, goes off at 7.15. At the weekend, uh, it comes on a bit later um, because you generally get up later. And in the evenings, I've got some different schedules depending on uh, time of day the kids get home from school. So I've kind of optimised it to uh, what I need. So that's the heating, and there's the the hot water control. The reason why I've been able to optimise it is because you get these nice charts, and I can see this is for yesterday. So uh, during the night when I get up, then during the day when no one's in the house and then in the evening when the heating was on and um, it was a bit cooler yesterday it was a bit frosty so the heating went stayed on a bit longer so I actually left it on uh, till that time or boosted it till 9pm and then you can see the house cool down and there you can see it as it cooled down gradually and actually the coolest time was 8am which is on the old system when it was just every day it would have been higher at 8am because I would have had it on at sort of 5.30 but because I get up later I set it um, to come on a bit later so uh, and it's gone off now so you'll see that you do need one thing I don't, I don't like hopefully they'll add soon is the ability to export this it'd be nice to export this data into uh, an analytical tool um, but 
nevertheless it is useful to see and it gives you a good idea of to how to optimize your heating and I can see the days and I, the, the web interface is actually pretty good so um, if I want to put the heating back on I just click boost and that will turn the heating on. I'll actually do it through Alexa in a minute. Um, or if I want to advance it to the next schedule slot and so on, I could do that. I need to clean these unused ones up really. But that's um, really simple and uh, really easy to use. And of course, you can do it through the controller as well to boost the heating, which is, uh, you know, when the kids come down, they want to boost the heating, they can do that. They don't need access to this. You can give them access, but they, they don't necessarily need it. So the Windows version actually has all these fe same features, it even has a graph, the Android and iOS ones are a little bit simpler actually. Um, so I, you can see, I just need to refresh, let's go. One thing Hive does as well is it has plugs and things, so smart plugs so you can see there. So there you can see that it's currently 18 degrees and um, the, the boiler is off and I could tap there to boost it and you can set the schedules from from here as well um, so that's the schedule so I can do those daily schedules here I found it a bit easier to do it through here but uh, it's up to you to you know whichever you prefer so as well as having that integration so now I've got all this and I should say as well this all works outside of the network I don't have to be at home for this to work because of that bridge is uh, taking the signal you know connected to the internet so um, I can do this from anywhere so uh, if it's cold and you're on your way home late at night and there's, you know, there's been no one in you want to boost the heating from before you get home you can do that uh, you can also use um, some other uh, like IFTTT which I'll show you in a sec as well but let's go through to Alexa uh, if you go into smart home um, there's a couple of skills I found. I've added go to smart home to your to-do list. Oh yeah, Lex is listening to me. Um, there's a couple of skills I've got. The Hive one and there's another. There's two Hive ones. And uh, this is one of them. One of them is just for controlling. So you can say the keyword and then um, tell Hive to boost the heating. And it'll do that. Alexa, tell Hive to boost the heating. Sure, I have boosted your heating for one hour at 22 degrees. There you go, so it's as simple as that. Um, I can hear it, it's clicked on now. I go back to the um, browser, it's just, it does auto refresh, but I'll refresh it so we can see. You can see that it's now on, the boiler's lit, and the heating's on. So, you've got to use that tell hive verb so it's using the other skill I've not yet worked out why they have two separate skills but anyways the, you can see these devices you can group them together so I can add that thermostat to uh, my other groups which I showed in the previous video where I can link things together so I guess you could have one command to turn everything off but anyway using the tell hive verb works quite well what you can't do is um, is ask Hive the current temperature, which is a shame. I think that would be quite that would be quite useful. And then you can say ask you can ask Hive the temperature. Oh, and it says it's 90 degrees. You can say uh, boost the heating. So you can't do that. Now the other thing I mentioned was integration with if then and that. And um, this is a nice little service. And I'll probably spend a bit more time on this on the on a future video. Because I've also got a really good app called Stringify, which um, does something a little bit more advanced than that, but I'm going to save that for the future. Um, but I just want to show you the kind of things you can do here with Hive, because Hive is enabled on here, and um, here are some of the things you could do. So when I'm 30 minutes from home, turn on the heat to 21 degrees. So that's a, a, a recipe or an app that they now call them that uses geolocation, uh, and actually this is. Uh, using BMW geolocation but you can create your own using the iOS or Android geolocation um, and it will detect your location and then boost the heating and there's one I think that's using the um, Android location thing turn off my heating when I leave home so it's a geofenced app effectively so when the Android app, um, 
phone leaves the area you set as home, it then notifies Hive to turn the heating off. And uh, so there's one boost hot water from the next shower, and that's using a different Strava. Um, so you can do all that kind of thing. So you could have it so when you've reached a certain, uh, done a certain run, it turns the hot water on. Um, or here's one that works, I think this is uh, Life360, which is a sort of home uh, family service where it knows where everybody is. You can set this so that when everybody's left the house, it'll turn the heating off. And um, there's one that uses the weather, that when the weather drops below a certain t temperature outside to turn the heating on. Uh, so you've got all this kind of flexibility you can do. You can do any combinations, really. You can... Um, you can have a do button on your, because the, the um, IFTTT supports what's called a do button, so you can have a do button on here, so you can put a big button on here, it works on Android Wear. You could, uh, I said you could have locations, you can have triggers when an email comes in, it can turn your lights on and, and turn your hot water on, and that kind of interesting thing. So IFTTT, one of the limitations seems to be you can only have one trigger, or one action, sorry, so turn the heating on. Um, Stringify, which is something we'll look on a future uh, video, allows you to do multiple things. So you could have it turn the heating on, turn your hue lights on, uh, start your Sonos playing, and that kind of kind of thing. So th there's a lot of different things you can do with this. You can virtually have any trigger to any action. Um, you, know, you can even use your calendar. See, there's one using your calendar to turn the heating off when it sees holiday in your Google Calendar. All that kind of stuff is possible through here. But for me, the main thing was to make it nice and simple to work with, either through the web or app or dial it with, with, the, with the console in there, and, and that's what it does. There are other systems that uh, learn their temperature, so they put the heater on earlier, uh, if it's, you know, depending on the, te the, the, the temperature of the house and that kind of thing. It's a, I think Nest is one of those. It's, no, it's a good idea, but for me, I wanted something a bit, little bit more simplistic and, e and more predictable, and something that the family could could easily use. So now the, the, hot, the heating's on, I can actually go and uh, turn that off. So I'll go and turn it off. But instead of doing it through my phone, which I could do, I'll turn it off from the unit in there just to show the simplicity of control. So here's the unit now. It's on 30 minute boost. Set that to off now. Okay. And I heard that click off then, and it's now going to turn the heating off. So that's it, that's high. It's really simple, um, simple to use. You've got some interesting stats and things on the, the web to get some interesting data out there. Easy to control and mainly easy for the rest of the family to use as well. It's about 250 to get installed by British Gas. You can buy a standalone unit from somewhere like Amazon and install it yourself if you if you're capable. And they do do multi-zone as well. I've got one single zone, but you can have multiple zones. So check out all our videos. We've got lighting, and I'm going to do a security one and and uh, apps as well. So thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.